here we are. I always start out with, hey, why do I do that? I have no idea. Anyway, maybe I'm a horse. Hey, that's not even funny. Why would you say that? Glory to God, we're here. We prayed for you to be drawn. I thought a piece of paper. No. <laughs> and uh, we just, you know, we've been thanking again. We're always thanking. And uh, uh, to bring you, you know, how... How do you walk in the spirit? How do you walk as Christ? How do you how do you walk in the light as He is in the light? How do you walk like that? And we've come to the conclusion that you know it's by believing, by and, and believing is thinking, that you think as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, which is Psalm, no, Proverbs 23, 7. And uh, you know, as a man thinks in his heart, what do you think? You know, we're on uh, everything. Newspapers, TVs, radios, whatever, they, they try to direct your thinking to another way. And it, like you have to understand who you are. I've said this before, that knowing who you are is the highest thing you can do. Is it, you know, who is in you and who made you? If all in if God is all and in all, then, then he's in you and it says that you're in him, John 17. And uh, you you walk in that but by believing it and by speaking it forth in your life and declaring it, declaring it over you and your family that you bring that the love and the power and the demonstration the authority that God has given you the the, the joy of the Lord the, the you know that you're not worried about what the government's doing or what what the Chi Chi Fly in Zimbabwe way is doing or or uh, over in Ogawagi land, what the Sakizaki Seas are doing, you know, and some, something you never even heard of until the guy on TV says, it's gonna get ya! And then you start worrying about it, you know, and then you gotta get a vaccination because we make billions of dollars off of those. Anyway, but, you know, to, how do you walk by not thinking about all that stuff? You can't, you know, if the right one don't get you, the left one will, is, is the way they're talking, and I'm, I'm saying we're protected. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against me and my family in judgment, we, we shall, any, how does that go? Any, any, anyway, it shall not happen. <laughs> my mind just went, it took a trip to Zimbabwe land. But, uh, uh, so to speak forth the things that you want, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against me, we shall stop it, judge it. it it's our heritage as a, as a children, offspring of God. And we, you know, everything comes from God. I said this, you know, in the beginning, God. Everything came from God. So we flow. I wish I was flowing better. But anyway, uh, we're going to let Terry flow now. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we've been, uh, again, talking about a lot of things this morning. How do we, how do we bring to you life-changing words Especially when God says that He's in us. It's more than just that because we actually are created in God's image. And to go a whole lot farther than that, we, we don't want to bring anything that would cause you to stumble and say these guys are out of their trees. They're, they're not bringing the real truth. But, you know, the Bible talks about, number one, is thanking. And, and there is a scripture and it's in Philippians. It says, uh, finally, brothers or brethren, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if, any, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So in the Word, God is saying, think. Think about it. And not only... Did God say that? But King David also thought about it. And he thought by meditating. And, and that's what meditation is. It's to think. And uh, so we could ask, what is, you know, what is meditation? Is it daydreaming? Is it emptying your mind? Is it reaching a higher plane of consciousness? And the problem with some of that is we were taught, I was taught in church that if you empty your mind out, then you're going to get possessed and have demons come in. But that's not what God is saying. He says, I want you to think about it because when you think, you actually begin to create. God was a thinker. And we didn't just 
come about because he didn't go through the whole thing thinking about how he was going to create us. I mean, we're, we're an awesome and wonderful creation according to the Word of God. And if we look at each other, man, you are wonderful. You are awesome because you really are created in the image of God. What it says in your brain when you think there's, what is it, 100 billion neurons in, in your brain? Or maybe more. Trillions. Trillions of them in your brain. So you didn't get that by throwing a roll of the dice. So when we think or we meditate through that, God can instruct us. And that's what we're beginning to find out. Because if I'm created in the image of God, then I've got to open my, my mind up. My con consciousness really is an awareness. I know it. A knowing. You know, we've got to know what we are. We're gods. And it actually says that in the Bible back in Genesis. And it says God, how'd they use the word? Elohim? Elohim. Elohim walked with Elohim. God walked with God. And today in a lot of uh, settings, uh, you'll be probably put down because of saying it like that, but King David said we need to meditate. And when you meditate, what you really are doing, one thing, is the world's distractions is you're separating from that. Because the distractions in the world are those things that delay us or get us out of out of focus. We focus on all of that stuff. And that, that's not what helps us. And so, you know, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, people today do not have time to think because everything else comes first. So they're, they're missing a lot of, um, they're missing focus and they're missing what God has created and put in them to do because they are gods. I, I don't know what else to say. Well, even Jesus said that your prophets, I think it's in the, the Psalms, it says that, uh, that you are gods. And the word Elohim means many member God. You know, now that they'll throw rocks at you for that one, but but that's because each one of us has and that's why we have, we said it before, different fingerprints and different personality and different hair, different skin, that and different we've had different upbringings by different people, and that we we bring forth the that part of God that God wants us to bring forth. But if all we're doing is following you know, Billy Joe Bob on TV, or even even our, we, we just hear it from the people that in our, whatever we go to to hear about God, and and we're just bringing forth what we heard from somebody else and not hearing it from within us, that hearing what God has put in you, for you, for your family, for you've been put to these, you're with this family, put together for a reason, so you need to be ministering to them first and finding out, or even trying new things that does God really want me to go this way say that do this we've been I've been doing that you know seeing and thinking about you know just the, the light of God each cell in their body is, is programmed is, is uh, to be uh, for working for the best in my body and it's been programmed by God and I you know my mind has been set up how much of my mind am I using it in you know, we have the mind of Christ it says in uh, Second Corinthians, so if we already have all these things, uh, then we should be using them. You know, it says uh, in Corinthians to stir up the gifts that are in you. What are the gifts? The gifts means that you've been given it, so you have it. So what gifts have you been given? I've said it before. Even you know things that were on your heart when you were 12 or 10 or or 13. You know that you wanted to do, and you just sort of left them along the roadside because somebody told you you couldn't do it that way, or you got all hung up and and making a million dollars and and getting a Rolls Royce for Christmas and you know all the things the world tells you to do instead of you know getting the things of the spirit which if you go through it that way seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you so first things first we are all, we're all out of order we're seeking the things instead of the kingdom of God and Jesus said it's within you so where do you seek it's it it's in you and 
and you're not looking in the right place. Uh, what is it? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah. yeah. So still, this thing with thinking is what is something that maybe we've pondered over, maybe you've looked at, but not really done it, taken the time. And we said on this program, um, I don't know which, which, whether it was last week or the time before, but God in His Word says, be still. Be still really means to set, take a, take a place, sit down somewhere where you don't have the distractions and be still. And being still, the way I understand it, the only way you can be still is empty out your thoughts, empty out your mind, empty out your imaginations, and be still and listen. And whether it takes 10 minutes, a half hour, or whatever, be still and listen, and you'll begin to uh, hear God. You Actually, I guess I would rather say it like this, I'll hear what's inside of me because I'll cause the brain, I'll tell the brain to quit bringing the thoughts and the distractions. What God has programmed in him before the beginning of time. That's what has he put in there for him to hear. And that you can't, you can't get it when you're driving on the freeway and you've got all these distractions. You just need to set some time somewhere and be still. But things can't come to you when you're driving on the freeway and stuff. I mean, or in the shower or someplace where you're not even really thinking about God. And, and all of a sudden you'll, you'll get a word. I mean, because you, it's like, well, I mean, we, we fasted before and, and it's like I didn't really got anything while I was fasting. It was always afterward that I got it because I was too dang hungry to hear anything when I was fasting. No, but, uh, you know, to, to just understand, but to believe, to, to believe is to think, to think that I am of God, to think that I am, because we've said it before, you know, I, I can look in the mirror and I remember what I did 30 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, three weeks ago, what I thought that was not really of God, and I'm thinking, you know, how can I be of God when I thought that, or did that, or, or whatever, or planned to do that, or, or, you know, whatever it is, but, but that's what the thing is, you know, it says, the Word of God says it, that, that we are, of, you are of God, little children, and you come to God as a child, and then you just believe that, that He is in you, and He is what He said, but believing is thinking, I think. I mean, it says in, in Romans 6, and I've quoted it before, it says to, to reckon yourself to be sinless, to, to, to reckon yourself, yeah, I was just saying, anyway, to, to think that you don't sin. So, I'm, I, you know, my ginkgo below is not working today, but uh, that's a memory enhancer. But, uh, you know, to, to reckon yourself free from sin is something that they don't teach. They teach, get down here, they want you to repent. They want you to tell us about what you did and get it out to the congregation here so we know what a lousy, good-for-nothing, flea-bitten, backstabbing, son of a second on Michigan preacher boy you really are. And, and, uh, did you write all that down? But, I didn't uh, write that down. Who wrote this script? <laughs> but, uh, anyway, but, you know, that you don't need to do all that. I mean, I, I think, you know, if you, if God, anyway, you, you are God. And to, to bring that forth, go ahead. I want, I want to kind of uh, say it the way I could, I could know it or understand it. It's, it's as you think in your heart, so is it with you. So that's part of the problems that we have is, like you, you talk about sin. Sin, I, I really would like to say sin is more of a misconception, a misunderstanding and Don and I talked about that today. We really don't believe that God looks at the sin the way man does. Because I don't think he looks at sin. Would you say that's going to get rocks thrown at us? <laughs> They're all, hey, he without sin, I him throw the first. But no, I, I like that. That's, that's really we were talking about. We were talking about that earlier that you know, sin, and it's really all of sin and falling short of the glory of God. It's almost like if you didn't fall short of the glory of God, you wouldn't sin. So that the whole thing is, is believing that you are of God and that you do walk in the glory because Jesus Christ paid for it to make you a new creation in Christ Jesus. And so then you believe that. And then even if you do 
have what they call sin, if you have a moment of stupidity, or, or a, I think Jesse Duplantis said one time, a, a fit of carnality, that, that you, you know, you get out of it as quick as you can, because everybody has a, you know, a brain fart, you know, has a, your mind takes a vacation, you're not, you know, uh, consider yourself dead to sin, reckon yourself dead to sin was the scripture I was supposed to say, but, and that's in the Bible, so, and I never heard that preached, reckon yourself dead to sin, I mean, they, they're always yelling at you, you're a sinner, and, and uh, who told you you were naked, who told you you were a sinner, it wasn't, didn't come from in here, but anyway, and so we read this earlier. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 14. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that, is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. You know, I've heard, we were talking, and we've heard like three or four different sermons on different things in there, but we, I've never heard it all together. That we should know him no longer after the flesh of Christ. We should no longer know Christ after the flesh because he's not in the flesh anymore. He's risen in the spirit. He's in a, he's in a, a, a glorified body. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He took humankind, he took mankind back into the Trinity. He lifted us way farther up than before what he did, a new creation. And we're in Christ Jesus, in the Trinity. Woo, you get stoned for that one in quite a few places. But we don't care because you can't throw stones through it. You break your TV. But anyway, so, you know, but not imputing their sins to them, their trespasses to them. Imputing means reckoning or are putting them on you. He's not imputing, he's not putting your sins on you. That God was in Christ reconciling the world. The Father was in Christ when he was on the cross getting rid of all this stuff, all the laws and all the everything. He, he completed the law. He got rid of all the charges that were against the first Adam. And you were in the first Adam. That, that's a long story and you, you got to figure that one out yourself because I haven't figured it out yet. But, but, you know, we were in mankind. And we got the same judgment that Adam did. And so it says in 1 Corinthians what is it, 15, I think it says that, that Jesus Christ is the last Adam. So what he did, he took us back to the get-go, brand new creation in him, risen into the Trinity in heavenly places, which is really God is, is everywhere. In him we live and move and have our being. So he's the kingdom of God is within you. So where's Christ? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why you need to think about this stuff. You, you need to get some answers for yourself. So you don't need to get them from Billy Joe Bob down in the corner who says he knows it all because he read the word. It's written on our hearts now. This is a good, like we've said before, watermark or a good place to start. But you really need to get the complete story in here because it's written on your heart. That's why the Ten Commandments, everybody wants to put them on the walls of the school or the courthouse. But the Ten Commandments are not what it's about anymore. The Ten Commandments, you know, I don't... I don't commit adultery, and I don't steal, and I don't rob, and I don't bear false witness, and I don't commit murder because that's not who I am. Because it's written on my heart not to do that anymore. I'm a new creation. I'm not a sinner saved by grace. You know, who told you you were naked? And with what he said right there, you need to replay this on what he said. Stop and meditate. Meditate on it. Get it firmly fixed in your mind. Because in the Word, God was a thinker. And because He was a thinker, He was a creator. And we all are created in His image. We are God's. We are all thinkers and creators. And a thinker lives in a world of his own conscious creation. So, He's creating it. He create, And we create... Believe it or not, we create our world 
our sphere of influence by what we think and have thought on, what we have meditated on, and then what we speak out of our mouth. So we can create, if, if, if you're saying right now that it's all hell around me, I hate the way I live, I hate what's going on in my life, you have created that by the words that have come out of your mouth. And God says we can speak life or we can speak death. And we should most certainly begin to speak life. Life is really, as we talked about it this morning, it's light. And the Bible refers to light as the word, the truth. And we should speak the word into an ailing world, into situations that everybody has going on. We should change that, speak death to what we've tried to bring to life and manifest itself. Do you know that what you speak really will manifest? And, and that's what we're saying. And it comes from our thinking and our thoughts. And God says He's a thinker. He's a creator. You know, we've said it before that He thought about the mountains. He thought about the oceans before He created them. He thought about us. It says in Psalm uh, 139 that He wrought you in the dark places. He wrought you. That's an old English word for He worked. Well, each one of you, He put something special. He put special things in you. That's why our fingerprints are different. That, you know, I just said all that, but, but that's what He did. Each one of us is supposed to bring forth what he, what word of God he has? What, what's the, what's the mystery that God has given you to put the puzzle together for everybody else? And we're just sitting around trying to make a buck so we can get a bigger TV, you know, because the world just wants to make money. So we need to get out of this, that way of thinking and seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. But it's like as you think, thinking is creating negative mental attitude, positive mental attitude, and with the positive mental attitude. You know, even though the things, you know, things are still going to happen, but how you react to how they happen. Does it just blow your psychedelic mind and you just fall apart? Or do you say, okay, it's going to get better. Better. I got that as a word the other day. Better. It's going to get better. This year, a lot of things are going to come forth that, that are produced that you didn't think you that, think you lost or think you were never going to get. I wanted, this is John 17, verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, speaking of the disciples and the apostles that were around him. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are one in me and in you, that they also may be one in us, that the word, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me, this is Jesus speaking, I have given them that they may be one, just as we are one, in I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. That's Christ speaking, red letter, John 17, 20 through whatever, 23. And we and we just want you to understand that as the Father loved Christ, He loves you because you're we're all part of His body. It says he's the head and we're the body. What does that mean? You know, this, this body is part of me. It's not all of me, but it's part of me. So we're part of Christ and Christ is in the Father and the Father is in him. So we're all, we want you to think about this. It's all in the word. They've taken it and made it all about sin going to heaven or hell, but it's not about that. That's like, you know, heaven and all that is like a benefit. Like you have the job is the main thing that you're supposed to have your job. And the benefits are vacation and 401k and whatever. 401k is the biggest joke. When, when we got retirement back in the day, retirement was a lot better than 401k. And it didn't have nothing to do with the a stupid old stock market either. But, uh, sorry. <laughs> but uh, just not thinking. And uh, that we are part of him. That you are part of him. And it's all here in the book. But they've looked over all the spiritual stuff. It says to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Romans 8.1. But then they don't. Everything is fleshy. Everything they tell you to do is fleshy. Everything. Nothing is spiritual because because they don't understand the spirit. I mean, we really don't understand the spirit either. But I know it's more than what they're telling you to do. And it's because they're always telling you to do something. We're telling you to sit still and listen to God and let Him tell you what to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's, that's really, that's good words. It's good wisdom, revelation. Because in Jeremiah, Old Testament uh, 33, it says, Call to me. And I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. 
So we need to do this. It's inside of us. So I'm saying go inside. Let's, let's, what is it? What is it? Lead me, guide me, direct me. And in Romans 12, as Don was saying there, Romans 12 says number one is do not. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. He was talking about a pattern right there. Do not conform to it, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will for us. We all, we all need to be sending the light, the truth of God out. Rather than agreeing with what we're hearing, what we're seeing on TV, what we're reading in newspapers, what people are telling us, rather than agreeing with that, we need to send the word, the truth of God out that will cause change, manifestation of change, good things, not scary things, not bad things. Not things that when we hear that gets us in fear. We do not need to acknowledge fear. The honest truth is when we acknowledge fear, we're raising it up above God. Fear is the lowest thing in, in frequency or vibration there is. Love, the love of God is the highest thing there is in frequency or vibration. So we need to get ourselves up, each and every one of us, each and every person get up here where we can see and speak that which is good and holy and pure and uplifting and if we can't then we should shut up and not say anything if you can't say anything good don't say anything <laughs> at all my mama used to say but you know to to bring forth the wisdom of the ages the ancient of age the holy spirit is within you all the knowledge and wisdom it says that in christ jesus is all knowledge and wisdom and he's in you and you're in him so why are you out here looking to man who you know, obviously this ain't working you know i mean look at the world and look at the whole situation the word for world that he said there we do not be not conformed to this world is the word cosmos which is the the uh the things of the world the systems of the world the political the the stock market, all that kind of stuff, the systems, the religious systems of the world, be not conformed to that. And to renew your mind is if you renew, if I renewed a magazine subscription, that means I already had that magazine subscription. I renewed it. So that means that we, he's talking about the mind that when you were before the foundations of the world, when you came, when I was in the glory and with him and we're still with him, it's just like we're, it says in Ephesians, we're only separated in the vanity of our mind. But all this stuff is within you. A great is the mystery of godliness and it's within you the mystery is something you saw that it, that is to the glory of god to to hide a matter it's to the glory of kings to seek out a matter with he's the king of kings and he's the lord of lords and we got to get out of here because dodge is closing the streets up <laughs> and we thank you very much we ask you to send us emails we bless you and your family we speak light we speak for your whole body just to become the template that you understand that it already is not becoming, I gotta watch my verbiage here, but uh, that you are already. And we thank you, we love you, we bless you. We are one with you. It says that I read it. We are all one in Him.